what I learned from uh, last conference is that title is the clue. And uh, the example from Agile testing days, it's, uh, there was a presentation, 10 ways why automation is like sex. And explanation because everyone is talking about it, but not a lot of know how to do it in the right way. Uh, so actually, my presentation will be about working in a hardware environment. By the way, how many of you works uh, in hardware environment? IoT, or embedded, or whatever? One, two, three, four. Cool, it's much more than usually. Uh, yeah, let's start. So that's me and David, no change since five minutes. And uh, on the picture, that's me yesterday in Pendolino. It's a cool way of transport. You have sitting place, sitting on the floor. Uh, and uh, I lived in Krakow, like very, very long. Now I live in Kiev, working. It's cool. Do we have someone from Ukraine? Cool. Uh, what I like, it was said, I like beer, I like pets, I work for pet-related company. We are doing cameras for cats, like with laser. Uh, and how it's called? Uh, launcher with trees, so you can feed your, your pet. Uh, yeah, I like travel, so that's why I, it's in English mostly, and because of Eric. Uh, so you can see I like pets, I like traveling, I like food, I hope you cannot see that. Uh, and I like speeches and, and board games, so I'm going to compete in today's uh, contest. And uh, a few months ago, we set up Ukraine meetup uh, in Ukraine, and it's like the regular meetup, I suppose one of the first in, uh, in, in Kyiv, in that format, like normal meetup. And here on the right is my wife. I promised for the first time to talk about her because I'm just traveling, and. She's just sitting, so here she is. Uh, yeah, and there's like formal and private issues from my side. We can go. You can see normal table, my table, working with embedded and IoT environments. So what I want to say is to say it in a simple word. What can you expect from uh, working in a hardware idea area? Uh, what are the risks? what kind of competences you should have, or at least it's nice to, nice to have. So I said it's going to be easy, and the last picture was not so easy. A few notebooks, a few hardware devices. Let's try to continue anyway, if you are still with me. So I'm assuming you want to start, or at least to know. So the first thing, some theory. Some physics mostly, ACDC, who know ACDC? Cool, and the other way of ACDC? <laughs> that's how it's too close. Okay, so that's first thing. The second thing are transformers. So, uh, because IoT is, or hardware, it's mostly about direct current, so you need to somehow decrease, so what you have from the socket. And the last thing is DC. So usually IoT devices are like five, 12 volts, maybe three, something like that. So about theory, the main point is here, you don't have to know that. It's not so important, it's just theory. So that was regarding theory. What about the real <coughs> skills? It's soldering, you see like even a little kid can do that, so why don't you can do it? The second one, Using multimeter, you can use citrus, like to put some uh, diodes, and for example, measure. It's a nice experience to start. Uh, and the last one is voltage generator. So, who of you can use at least one of the tools? Okay, that's good. So you can start. And the main point here is that you don't have to know that anyway. <laughs> so what do you have to know? You have to know that it's not just a chicken, but it's in a mouth, there is sensor, and it's sensor probably there is some gift uh, from Lego Mindstorms. It's pretty cool to start, and it's quite expensive, but if you have children, you can say it's just for him or her, and then it works, and your wife or husband, 
and you can like teach him or her. Uh, so first thing, I call it hard skills and competencies. You are. Who knows what is you are? Cool guys. Uh, free people. UART is just a protocol to communicate. This universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. Sounds quite scary, sounds quite hard, but it's not. You need three wires here, connecting three through kind of uh, adapter, and then to your board, any kind of board you have. And uh, it works usually the same like you would connect via SSH. So the main difference is you have physical connection. So whatever happens, like you cannot lose connection, just you cannot. If you reboot device, you still have some locks and you can control it fully. And there are pretty nice libraries for Linux-based operation systems. It's Minicom and Picocom. For Windows, actually it's for all uh, operation systems. You can use PuTTY. Who use PuTTY? Okay, a lot of people. So exactly the same, just instead of SSH, you can use serial. So we decoded UART connection, it's pretty simple. Um, just one tip here is electricity, so just don't touch too much. I guess you can feel some pain. The second thing is that because it's hardware, you can destroy it or you can somehow broke the device. And if it's working with uh, high voltage, like here, it's good to remember that always it should be isolated to not lose uh, devices. Like if you lose it once, probably your employer won't fire you, but if you do it twice or three times, it means you learn to nothing. So just remember about it if you have any IoT. And IoT, if you want or don't want, it's growing very fast and it's like 30% per year. So now there is, uh, as I remember, 11 billions of devices. So it's just logarithmic scale. Uh, quick change on Ukraine is 2020. Nobody cares about it, but that's just correct value. And what does it mean? So I prepared some small story here. We have three devices, three hardware devices marked on a red. Uh, we have one not very cool guy here, it's Belp, but connected to 2030. And we have the hero with the yellow uh, background who's isolating everything. And uh, answering the question you didn't ask yet, yeah, that's pretty nice setup, but I broke it once. So a lot of fire, a lot of smoke, it's nice. But as a conclusion from that, you should remember that it's very important if you work to somehow isolate it. Not, of course, in the same way every time, but somehow. Okay, so we have hard skills somehow set. Just UART connection, it's nothing strange, uh, nothing very hard. And we have isolating to not lose your devices because sometimes it's very expensive. Now, soft skills. For me, the very important is BDD. So everyone likes BDD or not. And for IoT, I think, or hardware related, it's very uh, useful approach because just imagine you have code sending, you send payload X, 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 and receive payload Z, 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 and then you should have time response, some, some kind of time response. But instead you, you can wear it in BDD approach, and it's pretty understandable. So you set some parameters on application, it's marked green, then you operate on that application, mobile application, and operating on hardware. So you send something in the air, some packets, or whatever you can do. And uh, blue one is just calculating, so just some uh, logic operations. And why does it matter? Let's look at this example. I call it addition extreme. So if you have any specification, you can use uh, Bluetooth protocol. And uh, it has 800 pages, as I know, 
as a specification and you should cover it. So it's bad to do it one by one, but instead you can use parameters and then whoever will come and uh, if something changes in documentation and it's pretty common that you have like 40 appendixes in just five years, it's very easy to maintain and you can keep it as a living documentation. And the second uh, soft skill is try to be agile. Who works in Kanban? <laughs> Not so heavy faces. Uh, and Kanban is cool from my perspective. If you have teams that can uh, work with firmware or hardware or mechanical design because you have such teams and in general it creates product. Of course you have software, somewhere, backend, frontend, whatever. But I have no idea how to introduce Scrum in a mechanical design team when you have workflow uh, dependent on some suppliers or you have no, uh, st it's out of stock or whatever. So here even, uh, like Kanban here is perfect. So just keep in mind that companies working with uh, hardware related products very rarely use just Scrum. It's much better if you can adapt it. And actually there's a definition of agile. So try to adapt somehow. Now, what are risks and opportunities for, for that kind of, for that area? Uh, yeah, that's main re risk. Opportunities is just the key word to make you believe that it's easy. Uh, but mostly, unfortunately, there are risks because we have real devices. Uh, a few words about modern, modern world. We have DevOps. It's cool. Nobody wants, no, no, everyone wants to be DevOps. We have TestOps, which is pretty new. And I heard last time Dev TestOps. Who knows, who knows what is Dev TestOps? I have no idea as well, but I heard it a couple of times. So everyone wants to do it continuously. It's like good way, good approach, but sometimes uh, you just cannot achieve that. And if you want to achieve that, if you have real devices, you cannot like dockerize everything because you have it in place. You cannot uh, simulate or emulate because you want to have a real device. And the risk here is the first thing, the first thing false positive and false negatives. If you are like ISTQB certified testers, you should know that uh, terms. Who knows what is? False positive, false negative. Okay, not so many, but I prepared picture. So that's false negative, that's false positive, and it's pretty common. But uh, however it, uh, it, it sounds, it's not so risky because usually after a couple of weeks or days, you can uh, find, find the reason and see, oh, that's not working how it should. But you have, uh, like the behavior is always the same. Wrong, but always the same. But there is something more. It's called flaky test. And uh, flaky, flaky test means that someone test pass, someone sometimes fail without any change. It's like draw uh, like the, the coin and just wait for the score. So. Flakiness for hardware is very common because you have any wires connection, electricity, and so on. So what are the main reasons that cause so, uh, let's call it, uh, called so-called flakiness? First one is environmental issues. So something that we have uh, around. Humidity. So however it sounds, it's huge risk because you can get kicked like when you touch something metal or not even metal, you can be kicked, uh, kicked by electricity. If you touch the screen or touch the device, probably it will reboot and it's end of your testing stability. So the solution here is to just buy hum humidity fire. It is working nice. So uh, the problem is here, a lot of even embedded developers do not remember about it. And it can cause a lot of problems. For me, it took uh, four months to find out what was the reason of that very uh, unstable environment? And 
Meanwhile, we broke the wall, we exchanged the floor, bought the special uh, electrostatic re, uh, carpet, and invested in general a couple of thousands. And humidifier was cool, because it was like 90s Lodiv. The second one is temperature. So if the temperature vary, the behavior can be uh, different. And you are working with notebooks. It's, if it's too hot, then uh, the performance is much lower. The same in that case. Daylight, uh, it's pretty common when you are working with vision or lightning environment. So we have day and we have night. And you cannot change it, even if you really want. Yeah, that, that, that was funny. Uh, so the, re the, the solution here is to build isolated uh, laboratory to always have the same conditions. The next one, walls, bricks, obstacles, for example, any wireless communication, like guys said before, if you have walls, uh, thick or thin walls, it can change a lot your, in, uh, your results. So again, the solution here, here is to build dedicated li uh, laboratory. And the second one, the second main reason, I called accidental ones. So loose wires. You just connect wire, and it's like somewhere after a few days, and you cannot connect it. The second one, race conditions. Who knows what is race condition? Well, cool. So the rest we'll check later. No, but the race condition is when you have, uh, for example, if you send two signals in the same time, you don't know which one will be the first, so it can influence logic of your test. Because like uh, the metal is too, 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 too thick and then signal can be uh, faster than the other. Sudden peaks, uh, peaks in electricity usage. Again, we have in Poland like Energa, I suppose, is the most common. We cannot blame that. Uh, we cannot blame them for that, but sometimes you can have some peaks. And then it causes very unstable tests. Uh, memory leaks and other issues, you can find it in any servers. And the same is with hardware related products. And the last one, I call it bad boy. So a guy who will just came and pull off the wire or disconnect. And it's not funny. I mean, for that guy, probably it's funny. But I met a lot of situations when someone came. For example, if you have vision system, like isolated, someone came and just, whoops, and it was like um, changed. So yeah, there was about nine and night and day issue. Um, and the main risk, from my perspective, are any kind of updates. So let's think a little. Any web applications. How the deployment looks like. Uh, usually it's one click, so you just deploy. If something went wrong, you can make very quick rollback. Amazon is like very proud that they are making uh, deploy every two seconds, as I remember. It's pretty cool, so it's quite safe. For mobile apps, well, a little bit more tricky because you need to send to, uh, to the store or Google Play. But again, it's probably up to uh, a few minutes when you, when, you, when you send, or if it will be accepted. For desktop applications, maybe again a little bit more, more tricky. But again, you can reinstall re it, uninstall, install again, and you are done. With hardware devices, if something goes wrong, probably the customer will be unhappy if it stops working. If the cube is bricked, it means it cannot work anymore. So it just stuck during update process. And it's useless. And the customer is unhappy. And your boss is unhappy as well. So from the business pers perspective, um, it's like main killer for, for your company, especially if you can execute massive update. And uh, thousands of uh, devices will break. But somehow we can make it safer, and let's make it by tests. 
continuous update and downgrade, so keeping compatibility between versions. If you have new feature or some bug fix, you can do it in the right way. We, are, we can call it continuous testing, but here it's just about checking compatibility, like higher and lower version. The second one, you send to customer, just do it in a small parts at the beginning. Because if something goes wrong, uh, it's not so bad, like maybe 1% of your customers will be affected. And the last one is backdoor solution, which is not very pretty, but it can help you without disappointed customer. So the first one is just internal lab automation and continuous integration approach. Very well known. The second one is to introduce alpha or beta testers, which is pretty common as well. But thanks to that, if something is very critical, and in that case, blocker means real blocker, because device is blocked, uh, you can send them new device and it won't hurt you because they are your testers or early adopters. And backdoor solution, I call it, because all the uh, IoT devices are working in a wireless way, or at least most of them. And maybe there is a way to ensure that the connection can be done in, done in a wired way. So then you can just put the new image and reboot it. The second solution is to create a spe the separate partition that can be restored. And the last one, um, it's least comfortable, so you can execute script that will update it on a customer side, but it, can, it, it, it always cannot work because if it's fully bricked, then you have no access at all, wireless access. And uh, just after me, as I know, there is a speech about performance in IoT. And yeah, scale really matters here. It's cool if your environment works for five, de five devices, but if for 20 it's totally bricked, uh, then it's not good. So here you have a lot of factors that can affect that. And usually, because it's wireless, if you have like the thousand, uh, thousand of devices that send the packages or relay packages or like resending whatever or processing, um, it's tough to maintain and it's tough to test. So at the beginning, it's very good to consider what are the main factors that can affect so kind of risk-based testing. And uh, from my perspective, usually it's the number of devices that is uh, that, uh, like our main requirement from the customer. And the second one, num numbers of packets per second that, that we can control and process on the devices uh, as those devices has very limited uh, power, operation, operational power. And the last risk is open source for even the biggest distributors like Nordic Semiconductors or Texas Instruments, they have their own tools. And it's open source. And it's cool because you don't have to pay. But uh, all the development kits are very expensive. And then if you download it and something is not working, um, they very often don't care because for them it's working. And here, just be prepared that something can happen and maybe you will have to introduce something else, like external solution, like this small wire, uh, and in that case, that was to reboot the whole device. Because of course, there was function to reboot device, and it just didn't work. So be prepared. That is not your fault, it's just open source. Anyway, shit just happens. And you can mitigate risk as much as you want, but what? Nothing. And just two examples from, one is from last year, is for Airbnb uh, logs. So during update, all lockers were blocked. And uh, the business model was that 
customers or visitors or tourists have their own card and they, they, they can easily uh, enter the house with that card and you don't need to meet even the owner. But all lockers stacked and all very unhappy customers cannot enter house and it was quite global scale. So here's the example of uh, update risk. And the second one from my favorite pet related environment, it's pet feeder so you can schedule how often uh, your pet will be fed, how much food and so on. But something on the backend sign was broken and I, I really love the uh, tip from the owner of the company, of CEO of the company, because he just recommended, hey guys, do not forget to feed your pet because he can just die of lack of food. And that was official solution from CEO of that company. So as you see, it's not always reliable. And uh, from my perspective, it's fun testing hardware devices or something hardware related. Uh, now I will try to prove you that it's fun. The first one, it's never just firmware or hardware because the architecture is much higher. So always you have client side, it's usually mobile application or desktop application. So you have another very big component to test and kind of backend that is processing data, making some decisions or scheduling or just processing signals. So it's never just hardware. It's very big infrastructure. Uh, practical usage at home, and that's what I like as I bought new flat. So that's what I found from a couple years ago. It was like more uh, prototype, just, just for fun. It's airship. And it's uh, made in a very tough, tough way. But it's so fun when you can build something like that and you can control it. I made even a software which is not very pretty, but you can just using that control your uh, airship. And the whole implementation took maybe four months on your side. So yeah, it's pretty simple if you don't use very complex solutions. Uh, and you can work with really awesome and new technologies. Just examples. The first one is Amazon Alexa. Do you know what is Amazon Alexa? Who knows? Yeah, so it's uh, US stuff, US guys. You can talk to Alexa, hey Alexa, play my Despacito. <laughs> and it will play. Or Alexa, feed my pet and it will feed your pet or whatever. You can integrate it with any application you created and it's controlled via voice. It's very similar to Google Home, but, but it's uh, mostly popular on, popular on US market. Then beacons and even, uh, yeah, we should be proud because in Poland we have two of five biggest beacon distributors. As I remember, one is Estimote and then the second, I don't remember. Uh, then smart home, everything connected with smart home. And the last one, IoT, any IoT devices. Uh, I remember the story with Amazon Alexa and uh, there was even like movie on, on YouTube. So the guy had a parrot and the parrot say, uh, Amazon reorder. And it reordered a lot. So parrots, be, be, be careful with parrots. Uh, exciting real test cases. So imagine we have this dispenser of treats. How can you test it as a system? Oh, you need to have a dog or your friend who will behave like a dog, but real dogs are better or a cat or whatever. And uh, a few slides ago, you have seen example with not working pet feeder device. And the, the solution was to feed your pet manually. But is the reason when something is working too good. So on the backend side, you cannot have like 
the request was processed too fast or the response was too fast. Here, if it's too fast, you have the whole floor of something fluffy. So instead of feeding your, uh, taking care of your pet to not die, you should take care of your pet and send him to, as Amy Winehouse sang, send him to rehab. And the last point, explosions. And I, I don't know if it's bad or good, you just cannot avoid it. Sooner or later you will burn something. So fire, smoke, everything. And it's cool. Just don't do it twice because your employee, employer will fire you. And that's all from my side. Uh, you can find me here or on after party or uh, join our fan page of, of Meetup in Ukraine.